Yeah, it's wonderful. It is hard to see the screen from over here, so I had to like guess on a lot of the words of the songs, but it was, it was still very fun. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so the tree, um, you know, it was pointed out that this tree, it's, while well, it, it's many things. It's a Christmas tree, it's a Yule tree, it's a, a solstice celebration tree. So whatever it is to you, mm, love it. So thank you, everybody, for putting that up. Um, on, that was on Thanksgiving days, from what I understand, which I also heard was wonderful, that there was a really nice crowd here of Thanksgiving Day turkey stuffers stuffing themselves, because that's what I, what I did. But, um, yeah, wonderful. Okay, so today and this month, we are changing our theme. So we're landing, or sticking to landing is what we're moving. Now, I'm curious, who remembers back into 1996, Atlanta, Summer Olympics, sticking the landing? And so her name was Carrie Strug, and she was on the U.S. Um, gymnastics team, and they had the chance to get the gold, the gold medal, but it was up to her. And she did her first jump, and I believe, if memory serves, she was already hurting. She had gotten hurt earlier on, but I know that in her first attempt to get the gold medal for the team, she twisted her ankle, landed bad, and it didn't go well. Um, but she had one more chance. But if you recall, they had to the taper up. There was like a time pause. It's, I'm not positive. I don't remember if it was a fracture or sprain or what, but she was in severe pain. And somehow she dug deep and she made her final um, vaulting horse performance running down on you know, one leg that's just in horrible pain she does her amazing bounce off the springboard and crazy flips through the air and lands it kind of like lands on one leg but she stuck it and she got it was like a 9.71 gold medal usa and it was just a heroic moment that's sticking the landing. And that's what we're being asked to do here at the end of this month, is to take everything from this year, from this concept of a grand rising, and really individually cement what it is that we're each going to be drawing from. What's going to wrap up this year to set us up for our continued growth and evolution, because we will get a new theme in about a month from now. And so today we're talking about standing on solid air. And, you know, I've had one person approach me like, what is that? And I get it. And so the, f the first thing that it's asking us to look at is the nature of reality. Space. There's so much space. So what it's, it's drawing on is like looking down at the smallest building blocks of everything that is. We have atoms, which is this, you know, one individual part of a molecule so the atom's pretty small but then it goes even smaller there's the electrons we have positive on the outside the neutron and proton in the nucleus but to give an idea of how much space there is i've heard a couple of different descriptions but one of them is like picture an nfl sized football stadium now take a marble a little glass marble and place that somewhere in the center ish that's the size of the nucleus, which within it has even smaller particles. All that space, and that's inside every single atom that we have. Everything. And then, you know, it's like, well, if there's that much space, why don't we just work right through it? You know, if, if this is space, I should be able to just pass right through my own hand, pass through anything. But it's the energy, it's the electric field that when anything gets close enough, it creates resistance, kind of like force magnets. So you never actually touch. I'm not actually touching this, even though it's making a sound. How is that possible? So what this is saying is that the molecules of air, if we break down you know, um, an atom that's going to be part of oxygen of O2 that we breathe. It's the same building blocks inside, quarks and the protons, different types of quarks. It's the same stuff inside that as it is that's inside of this. The air that is here is just as real and solid 
as anything else that we see. It's a mind-blowing kind of illusion to me, but it's so perfect. Everything is mind. And so what we're looking at is that the idea of our thoughts and our consciousness and what, what we perceive, what we collapse into our physical reality from waves into particles, thought is just as important, if not more important, than actual reality. We all perceive it different. We all have our own individual realities, but they all work together. So if thought is that important, if thought is what collapses and creates our reality, then it's important to know what we're thinking about. And so when Pam read the, from what we believe, I'm really glad that she did because I was thinking about reading it myself. And so that whew, took a lot off because it's, it's, a, it's a mouthful. But the idea is, this is powerful. It's where we, like Carrie Strug, when she stepped into and drew from something bigger, spirit showed up for her. Now, it doesn't always work out that way. It's, it could have, you know, we've seen other heroes that are in that same position that maybe it didn't stick to landing. But they tried. And everything works out in the perfect way that it is, in the perfect way that it does. And so it's developing our mind to know what we're thinking, to take everything that happens as happening for us. So we're here, we are co-creators, we create reality. We create our experience of reality through the words that we tell ourselves inside. But then, <clears throat> most importantly, the thoughts that we constantly repeat in our minds are constantly reflected back to us. So what are we thinking about? And that's where Ernest Holmes comes in with from what we believe. And the very first part of that from what we believe, we believe in God, the living spirit almighty. That's the basis. But then as it goes on and says a, a few different things, but it manifests itself in and through all creation. We've gone, you know, I've said this at least 10 times this year, I'm sure, that everything that exists, everyone that exists is God, is spirit, original source, the infinite universe, whatever you want to call it, everything is that. So why do I let myself get so worked up and, you know, maybe, I don't want to use the word angry, but maybe, you know, why do I let things out there get me so upset and then see things out there as like that person that did that thing, that person that's saying this or you know, whatever it is. When I am seeing that, I'm not seeing God. I'm forgetting completely that I am God. I'm forgetting that that person's God. I'm forgetting that this situation, it's all God. And so, our charge is to recognize that while everything is God, everything all around me, If I am seeing it as less than, then I am saying that's what God is. God is less than. If I'm seeing flaws in others, or what I'm calling flaws, I'm missing out on their God essence. And when I'm missing out on that, I can't see it for myself. And I can't create, collect, or intentionally when I'm feeling separate from it. The great master teacher, Jesus, you know, told us so many things. One, these things that I do, you shall do, and even greater. But the reason he was able to do what appeared as miracles to all those around him in the time was because of 
it's faith that I'm going to ask us to utilize, but faith at some point becomes knowing. And that's the only difference between ascended masters like Jesus or the Buddha, uh, Krishnamurti, whoever, like they all have this deep knowing. It's beyond faith. It's now knowing like I am that. So when we are here on earth, like we chose to come and incarnate in this body. Our spirits are infinite. Before we're in here, we're just in that state of pure bliss, a state of presence of being. And anything and everything we want is already there. But then we choose to come here and have this experience and grow and expand. And then when life gets really hard, as it does for everybody, because that's kind of baked into the recipe, when it gets hard, we forget what we come from. It's hard because we created it. We chose for it to be hard because that's what encourages us to draw deep, to draw upon and rediscover who and what we are. And so that infinite nature, that God is everywhere from what we believe. Becomes a mantra. It becomes our way of knowing, reminding ourselves who we are. And so as we close up this month of really stepping into a grand rising. I want to encourage us, and right now I'm speaking to myself. Every day, starting off as soon as I wake up, knowing that it, intention to be part of the bigger thing, to recognize and remember that we all play our roles. We talked about how you know, Shakespeare said the whole world's a stage and everybody is your actors in it. When you find yourself resisting what is, when you find yourself just really longing that things were different, recognize that they are exactly the way that they are right now for a reason. Everything unfolds in the ways that gives us exactly what we need exactly in the moment. And so by switching our mindset around those things that we really dislike and saying, okay, what is this pointing us to? What is this going to create? What do we want to see that's different than this? That's how we grow. That's how we expand. And that's how we really like stand. I love, I stand for love. I, I, I stand for joy. I stand for peace. It's in that knowing and constant repetition and embodying it that creates it. It creates a field. It's almost like that same buffer, like I can't touch this because there's a tiny, tiny little space of resistance there. If I can create my own energetic field, which we do, but I can hold it into love, I'm buffered. Everything's okay. I will be okay. This is a wild world. It is supposed to be exciting, scary, dangerous, happy, joyous, exciting. It really, I mean, that's the richness that is in, in this life. And all of a sudden then everything that causes me challenges, everything that, you know, gives me pause and makes me like have thoughts of just giving up or just like, I can't do this. All those things, they become the gift. And so knowing from what we believe, what, what do you individually believe? Do you believe that you are a child of the infinite? I'm, I'm looking for answers. Who believes they're a child of the infinite? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, we don't need humility here. We are the child of the infinite, the children of the infinite. We are that. And any time that I forget it, 
which is part of the plan of why we came here. We intended to forget it. But every time we do, we're back into the drama of life. And that's okay. That's what we're here for. And at the same time, though, when people that show up at Centers for Spiritual Living, people that feel that there's something bigger, we're creating a new way of being. We are no longer in default. We are no longer pushed around by the whims of society. We are saying, yeah, there's something bigger. Yes, we can live differently, and it's and so that's our, our charge this today, this week, is to recognize that we are that infinite and everything I need I already have. And in that other place beyond this physical life, it's all good. It's all God. Those two words can be interchangeable. So with that being said, our, our spiritual principle for this week is we believe. And there's, you know, I love, you know, every single Science of Mind magazine since 1927 has had that declaration of principles in there. And so you can look it up anytime that you would like to remind yourself of what, what you are, what we are, what everybody is. And then we can sit back and we revel in the joyousness that is this life. So our spiritual practice this week, I want to encourage myself and whoever else is on board with it to use affirmations. And I, I find myself, I'm doing this a lot lately. Um, you know, life is interesting, and within bigger life that's interesting, I have my own micro, you know, close family life, which is interesting. Stuff is interesting, and I'm finding myself pretty frequently drawn on affirmations, drawing on different techniques to just ground myself and remind myself be still and know that i am god so anytime that i'm activated anytime that i'm forgetting about my deeper nature or i'm forgetting about somebody else's deeper nature anytime that i feel myself get agitated be still and know that i am god and something about just taking pause and being there brings a shift in my physiology, a shift in my mental state, and it enables me to see more clearly moving forward. So knowing that we are all, all God, we all share the one mind, one consciousness. And when I draw upon it and remind myself, when I'm finding a problem for a situation, I, and I don't know what to do, and I'm a little panicked, be still. And know that I'm God. And listen. And the, the way that God, that one mind works through us, is while I'm doing that, something will say, you know, you need to pick up the phone and call so-and-so. Or, you know, just these little ideas come in. That's how God talks to me. I don't know how he does to you, but it's, it's subtle. But those little impulses like, oh, I need to do this. I need to do that. That is that mind of God working through us. But we have to disrupt that agitation when we're in it and remember, like, just be still for a second. Like right now in this very moment, I can be okay. And taking that pause and see what comes up. So our affirmation today is, I stand on solid thoughts to co-direct the flow of my life. I like that one. Solid thoughts, just like this floor that's not solid. But so let's say this together, everybody with a little bit of feeling. I stand on solid thoughts to co-direct the flow of my life. Yeah. One more time. Can we do that again? Like I stand on solid thoughts to co-direct the flow of my life. Yeah. <laughs> so just knowing. That spirit is here. Spirit is always inspiring us and that you are lifted, blessed, and guided. I want to say thank you. Thank you for being on this journey, for taking steps in the direction of that inner greatness of that one infinite being. Because that is how we shift the one mind. 
Every time that somebody else wakes up and says, I don't want to hurt anymore, I don't want to cause pain anymore, every time somebody makes that shift, our whole collective consciousness rises up because of it. Every time we help somebody else see the light or we hold out a hand and, and lift somebody up, we lift up everybody. We are collective. And when one of us is down, we're all down. One of us is lifted up, we're all lifted up. And it begins individually with one another. So let's take that into prayer. Just knowing that there is that one infinite mind, one infinite space, infinite universe. That every single subatomic particle dancing in my body is interacting with every single particle of the entire universe. That this physical world is the body of God and I am the eyes and ears of that. I am the way that God knows itself through itself. Each and every one hearing these words is the way that God knows itself through itself. We are all playing that eternal game of hide and seek where we remember who we are and we forget who we are and we do this over and over again each time picking up more pieces that contribute to the knowing of who and what spirit is, of what I am, of what each and every person as individualized expressions of that same thing is also being. So I open my heart with gratitude. I invite everyone to take a breath, and feel the life of spirit pulsing through, through your hands. As John directed in the meditation, you can feel the energy that is here within us and the ideas and inspirations, the beautiful pictures that form in our, in our mind's eye are just as real as the beautiful pictures that form in our physical eyes. So as we draw upon that knowing that there is only one infinite mind, one infinite spirit, and that it is love with a capital L, then we become love with a capital L. So with gratitude for this creative mechanism of the universe, which takes our thoughts, our words, and the thoughts and words of all mind and creates our reality, inspires us to greater vistas and whispers in our ear those qualities that we believe God to be. Love, light, compassion, empathy, kindness, inclusivity, oneness, health, abundance, community, peace, all encompassed in love. So in gratitude for that, in gratitude for the, each and every person on this journey, each and every person on completely unrelated journeys, every actor on my stage, every actor on every person's stage. Thank you for it all. Thank you, spirit. And so it is. <laughs>